Lord and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did to, fail her. Yeah, was it was another from era. That. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. Hello and welcome to The Talk, I'm Daisy Kandrew. Tonight, Britain's counter-extremism czar warns London's becoming a no-go zone for Jews following weeks of pro-Palestinian protests. Plus, government plans to have AI listen in to patients' NHS appointments are branded creepy by outraged privacy campaigners. And a head teacher is sacked for assault after tapping her misbehaving toddler son on the hand. Joining me on the naughty step tonight are Penny Smith and JJ Anisiobi, Kevin O'Sullivan and Isabel Oakeshott. First, pro-Palestinian protests are turning London into a no-go zone for Jews. That's the extraordinary claim from Britain's counter-extremism czar, who's warning that hardline groups lurking beneath the terrorism threshold have gone unchallenged for too long. Robin Simcox said a permissive environment for radicalisation meant that endless Gaza demonstrations, which have left parts of the capital off limits to Jews, had become normalised. He urged placing tougher restrictions on protests, insisting this wouldn't be a step towards authoritarianism, but rather a necessary tool to restore order. Simcox praised the Prime Minister for his speech on the steps of Number 10 last week, in which Rishi Sunak pointed to a shocking increase in extremist disruption and criminality. But he added that the Prime Minister now needs policies that meet the scale of the challenge. Downing Street has tasked the levelling up Secretary Michael Gove with expanding the government's definition of extremism to include any individual or group undermining British values or institutions. And in the past hour, pro-Palestinian protesters have destroyed a painting of Lord Balfour at Trinity College, Cambridge. The British statesman paved the way for a Jewish state in the <sighs> Middle East. Oh, my God. So those really are shocking, shocking pictures. And, and I understand that nobody's been arrested for that. When I first heard, I thought it was going to be one of these protests where they've you know, mm. put custard on it, but it will be able to yeah. be, you know, it'll be restored. Like when it's in a box or something. Yeah, yeah, it's but, but, but that's, that's proper destruction, obviously, yeah. if we hear anything more about this. On the Robin Simcox story, I'm uneasy. I've always been uneasy about him as an individual. Right. You know, he's described as an independent... Czar, and his background is deeply political. He's a very, very um, divisive political figure. He's a, he was a big figure uh, in the Heritage Foundation in the States. He's very closely linked to you know, Banner, to Trump. Uh, he was integral to Liz Truss's speech over there. He was a Margaret Thatcher fellow at the foundation. He allegedly believes in the Great Replacement Theory. No, you know, what, that's... So, the place what? Hang on a quite, second. Right. He's an official Home Office commissioner. Yes, and I don't he think he should have been appointed. And I don't think he should have been appointed. And, and when, and when uh, today on our show we had uh, uh, Paul Scully, who had to apologise for saying there are no-go areas for Jews in uh, London and Birmingham. And the thing about that is, as Mr Simcox confirms, it's true. Yeah. If we're going to just crush debate on this, I'm not we are never going to get anywhere. I don't anywhere. think he's the, the right truth, person the for the job. Is, the truth is there are no-go areas in London and yeah. Birmingham, cities all over the country for Jews. And we've got to get real about this. And I don't think we should be undermining Mr Simcox, who is an official advisor on <laughs> extremism <laughs> To the home yes, office. Yes, he is, but I don't uh, think he uh, should have been appointed. Why? Right. Well, you, that's his right. baby, but they did appoint him, and he's making a very fair point. Are you saying what he's saying is not true? Yes or um, no? I would, I would suggest that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would suggest. Let's, let's get this show that, started, uh, shall we? <laughs> across the country, there are areas where lots of different groups of people feel. Yeah. That uh, they come yeah, I agree, to. JJ. Absolutely. Um, Kevin, you and I have been on these pro Palestinian uh, marches. Yeah, yeah. I would say for my Jewish friends, don't go. If you, yeah. and, and, that, and that does make then some of London that at certain times no a no-go area. <laughs>
But in the same respect, as I said before about Stoke-on-Trent, where, where I went to university, there were no-go areas for not just ethnic minorities, but students full stop. That, and and, that not, Stokes just, didn't and like. not just at weekends. And not just at weekends. Because that's the point I mean, about yeah. us, so it's cities about have no-go areas. It doesn't mean it's OK that they should be no-go no, areas. Not. But it's not that extreme a thing to say that parts of cities at certain times of day or night are no-go areas. There's lots yeah. of places I wouldn't go. Um, Daisy, I, I'm a little bit disturbed by the comments you make because in essence, <laughs> in essence, what I think you're saying is that the individual concerned, as Kevin said, has a very senior official position is a bit right of centre. No, is that no, your problem? I'm not, I'm, that is that, basically that, your problem. That, that is not. That is plenty not of lefties. What did he say that's wrong? That, that what did is, he say that's wrong? Okay, the, the Great Replacement Theory. Do you know what that is? That is the theory that America and Europe, uh, white people are being replaced by brown people. Yeah. It is a deeply, deeply divisive. It has been. A a theory. Never mind about it's a theory. that. Never mind about that. What okay, is well, it? What is it? That, and then what, that's is the answer. Answer. what is it that he said that you think is wrong? Okay, I think that. Never mind about him. him. What did he say that is wrong? Okay, about... In his wiser <laughs> comments, apart from the no-go areas, which is his... true. Kevin, are yes, you going to let? Can you yeah, stop on, interrupting on, me, Kevin? Yeah, yeah. It's really rude. In his well, wider comments, I'm a comments, really rude person. You know that. Yes, I know. It's why you're on this show. <laughs> but in his wider comments, That's my role. he has basically said that Islamophobia doesn't exist and has never has never existed. That is very divisive. When you are trying to get social cohesion better, not worse, having an individual that holds those opinions, I think, is irresponsible. And I think he was appointed as part of this policy by the government oh. to stoke up disagreement rather than make well, matters hang better. Hang on, that's it's absolutely ridiculous. ridiculous. Are you say. literally saying the government wants to, you just said the government wants to stoke up disagreement. I think Are that you saying certain that? individuals what? within the oh. Home Office what? do not want oh. anybody who's looking or do not want this man, you couldn't possibly ask this man, I don't believe, uh, to be properly independent. His title is what? independent no, czar, and I don't think he's independent. You're just waffling you now. You background. are just waffling to justify what you said, that certain people in the government want to stoke up division. Yes. How do you justify because, that? Because they want that. They, a lot of them... Why would they in, want that? They're the government. To win votes. The thing they want it's is why anarchy. a lot of politicians take a certain position. You know, and you and I have discussed this many, many times, that we know politicians take public positions on things that they don't privately believe in. And I know that you think that because we've discussed it before. Left and right, they do they, it. Of course they do. And that's what I'm saying the is Home happening Office here. is setting but, out to stoke up but, division. But in the same way, if this guy is saying that there are no-go areas in, in London and at uh, the certain cities, he cannot, on the other hand, say that Islamophobia doesn't exist when we know it's no. been it's that's quite wrong. 60%. That's wrong. That's wrong. Yeah. I don't agree with you at all, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I was actually going to go a bit more on the on the terms of this this extremism uh, business because the extremism that you know this definition of extremism. If there is, sorry, Kevin, did you just sigh and roll your eyes at me? <laughs> no, no, sorry, I was but just I was sighing just... generally. Okay, no. thank you. Uh, no, no, sorry, I'm sighing I was... at Daisy. I'm okay, not, all right. Sighing at you. Okay, because I was going to say about the extremism thing is the the worry about all of these things is always about the de uh, definition and it accidentally the law of unintended consequences, as we have found so often when they've tried to actually sort of you know do something to stop things. It's the same with dangerous dogs. You know, former the former um, independent. Um, uh, reviewer of terrorism legislation says plans to broaden the definition of extremism are unworkable because essentially if you're opposed to gay marriage for example or, or if you're opposed to abortion or or you're opposed to you know transgender rights or whatever you would also that's get caught up. That's me as up. an extremist right away then. But that's what I'm saying so we can't do it that way it has to yeah. be some other way and surely I mean I think that you know when, when you look at the cohesion of our communities the first thing that you sort of kind of look at is you'd go, hold on a second, how can we have people preaching, for example, wrong, you know, which, whoever they are, um, you know, preaching things which are against our, you know, our democracy, mm. etc. That is, that is, you know, we've got well, to try and get a handle on that as well. I mean, I actually feel we could talk about this all night, couldn't we? And it could Let's get do pretty it. easy. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Forget the rest. Instead, Let's do it. Let's do it. instead, we're going to move on to a story about the NHS, which is looking at using artificial intelligence to listen in on your NHS appointments. These are new plans that were outlined by the health secretary. The scheme, which a lot of people think is a bit creepy, would see software automatically generating notes during patient consultations with their doctors. 
Victoria Atkins, a health secretary, insists the tech will boost productivity because it would reduce the amount of time doctors spend writing up notes. The problem is all to do with privacy and the patient safety campaigners are somewhat concerned about this. It comes as doctors are going to start using the NHS app to monitor patients' step counts and other therapy in a, an attempt to tackle unhealthy lifestyles and get people back to work. The health secretary says the health service will make use of the wealth of data collected by the smartphones to help prevent serious illnesses and boost economic growth. So a record 2.8 million Britain, British people are currently off work with long-term sickness, and that has fueled fears that chronic illness is stifling potential in our economy. I think this is an interesting idea, using the AI to record patient consultations. To There's an obvious efficiency there. I think it's, though, fundamentally quite dangerous. And I've got an illustration of this from, from my own father, actually. Um, he, towards the end of his life, he, he had cancer um, and he had occasional appointments to review his treatment and his med medications that he was taking. And um, this type of technology was used to record the notes in the way that Victoria Atkins is suggesting. And at one of these consultations, his consultant said that my dad should just continue the medical regime that he was on, just continue. Unfortunately, the machine translated that as discontinue. Oh my God. And the ramifications were very, very oh serious. God. So my dad's medication was taken away. And as you can imagine, my dad was terminally ill already. So this was life prolonging treatment, every extra month counts and I'm afraid it took a very long time to reverse this whole thing because the official record said the doctor had said he should discontinue his medication. Um, in the end I was able to sort it out because I'm very pushy and I've got quite a lot yeah, of um, yeah. agency <laughs> but you know look not most people wouldn't necessarily be able to as quickly as I could yeah. overcome those barriers and it, in that simple illustration there it shows you the perils of this. So um, I I think... was, oh sorry I was just going to say about the fact that of course we all have accents as well. Yes. No sorry I know we're all interrupting everybody else but no we do there are accents which which AI which AI, they've proved time and time again, does not actually work very yeah. well with. I suppose the, the one thing I would say, though, is that, the, the, that this surely should be... I mean, you know, doctors typing in things whilst trying to have a conversation yes, is a one thing. That. There's a lot of that. But surely this should be a kind of... Uh, you know, there, there the notes come out, the doctor should read check them, them exactly. and check them yeah. over. Surely that would be enough because actually the typing away while you're having a conversation with the doctor is actually quite distracting. In fact, when you're actually, I mean, I've been lucky enough in the past five years to actually have a face to face consultation. Yeah, yeah. I don't That's find it creepy at all. You I don't it. find it and, creepy. And um, I remember no. when I was a kid, my doctor used to have a, a tape recorder. Mm. That yeah, they the did, didn't they? Yeah. yeah, and then they'd type up their notes at the end of the day yeah. for each person. When I was a kid, they had an invented tape recorder. <laughs> <laughs> you have to talk about diphtheria yes. when you're a child. <laughs> um, but um, to call it AI, as you say, this is just a computer program that yeah. the mm. face has been using for years. Yeah. But now it's everything is now AI. Yeah. AI. To make but, it sound like yeah. they're getting with the program. Yeah. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. But I think if it frees up the doctor's time a bit more. There just has to be patients. checks and balances. Checks checks. And balances. Yeah. Or you could send it to the, in some case, I know not everyone will want Ooh. to do this, but you could actually share it with the patient for them to that check the That would be a really good idea. That's a good idea. It might yeah. save yeah. a bit exactly. of time. Mm -hmm. and, and I do think Victoria Axons, because this was all part of a speech that she made, <clears> I think it was the Nuffield uh, Trust, and you know, it, within that she was saying that there was going to be an extra $3.4 billion um, specifically for NHS productivity, which is clearly really needed because the NHS is more wasteful, you know, particularly when it comes to IT and doctors and nurses spending much too much time doing paperwork and, and typing things up and so on. But also one of the things they've done is they've brought in the ex, I can't remember if he's the CEO or the chairman of MS, Steve Rowe, and they're bringing him in to be the productivity czar of the NHS. Right. That is slightly... I like the idea of the private sector coming in and trying to bash heads together and work out why they're wasting so much money or why they're using the wrong IT. But we've seen it so many times before when somebody from the private sector has been brought in 
and they cost a lot of money and then they realise that they think that they can sort something like the NHS computer system out and then they realise after a while that they can't and they go away with their tail between their legs. I, I know that sounds very pessimistic and I'd like... You're right, it does happen. But we've <laughs> yeah. got to keep trying. We've got to keep exactly. trying. I think that's they probably well right. bring some fresh... Yeah. Um, fresh, yeah. fresh perspective. Yeah, exactly. I just think we yeah. slightly. I mean, you know, it sounds sensible to me, but we have to be careful about AI or A1, as I tend to, <laughs> tend to perennially call it. Uh, uh, you know, this sounds sensible, but you know, ask AI to write you uh, an essay and then read it. It's rubbish. Mm -hmm. So uh, this kind of dependence on AI or our increasing dependence on it mm -hmm. has, we have to be careful about that. But, you know, also we, we shouldn't demonize AI uh, necessarily. It can be rubbish, but it can be good. And I would have thought that this might be an area in which uh, it could be yeah. beneficial. Right, well, coming up, a good day for Meghan Markle, who's been hailed a barrier-breaking visionary <laughs> female leader as she takes to the stage at a star-studded festival to celebrate International Women's Day. Pass the sick bang. You're going to be <laughs> needing it. That's next I'm ready. on the talk. <laughs> Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to ab and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Hey, Quite hey. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, 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 what did fail her. Yeah, we're supposed to was another era. That. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. of Sussex has been described as a visionary female leader, best-selling author ahead of her appearance on a star-studded panel at a festival in Texas. In the next hour or so, Meghan Markle will headline a session at South by Southwest on how women lead 
on and off screen in the glamorous worlds of film, education, culture and tech. She's also expected to discuss breaking barriers and challenging stereotypes as she addresses social media use. Megan taking centre stage in the States comes after she hired a British-based spin doctor in her effort to battle her popularity problem over here in the UK, something her husband doesn't appear to be struggling with so much. Harry's headline-grabbing autobiography, Spare, has been nominated twice at the British Book Awards, which celebrates starting conversations and pushing boundaries. Now, I'm not at all surprised that Harry's book has been nominated because just when you talk about raw sales good book. <laughs> it, well, good book it was a good book but it was a record-breaking book yeah. it sold more copies in the first few days than any other non-fiction book has ever in the history of yeah. books i mean that <laughs> no matter what you think of the man that's astonishing at the end of last year it was amazon's number one selling book and people say oh you know it had more um you know, discounted books than anyone else that well, does that's not relevant it's not relevant it? to harry or to the book publishers that's that's just how amazon the sells books, books. brilliant and the book oh, the book is very book. good so you know credit where credits i due. love the book i think it's incredibly well written we know that he didn't write it himself yeah, if only he'd have written it yeah yeah but he clearly <laughs> came up with all the detail of the memories you know as as a ghostwriter myself i could see how good he must have been to work with because because he had, he gave everything, didn't he? Yeah. It was an absolute dream yeah. for any writer to work with. And I think that the ghostwriter did a phenomenal job. Yeah, and, but I mean, it's, oh, I don't know. It's one of those things, isn't it, where you just go, yeah, he, he, you know, he's got so much to say, of course, because he's been able to go on all these amazing trips and That's sort of true, extraordinary yeah. things have happened to him. And, uh, uh, and yes, you know, it is actually down to the ghostwriter, because I doubt if if he'd have written some of the of no. the excellent language therein, and also <laughs> as we now know, a few of his recollections, the Queen was quite right. A few recollections may yeah. differ because it turned out afterwards that yeah, there that weren't some <laughs> there so were a number of things that were wrong. Sorry, well, exactly. I, bet, I bet he didn't tell the Queen about his frozen manhood, his frostbitten <laughs> thing. Uh, you, you never know. know. So <laughs> the, 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 these revelations were astonishing, and it was a great book. Uh, you know, so so I'm not surprised it's got these nominations to go to Megan though. Mm. Oh, she's a visionary leader. Oh. Who is she a leader of? Le yeah. uh, wh wh why is she a leader? Well, Who does she, she lead? She does have Who does she a lead? fanatical fan base. I mean, that's yeah. one yeah. of the problems. Well, that's not the same. So I she's mean, a leader well, of fanatical she, fans. I've yes, got 100,000 yeah. followers. I'm not their leader. I'm that, not their leader. That's not what you they say. You can be a social I think media you are. person who, who uh, people follow. It doesn't make you their leader. Why is she a leader? She's a self-styled leader spewing woke claptrap. Well, as as Daisy explained, she has loyal followers. It's more than just... Uh, having, make her a leader, it's, it's more, though, than, it's it? more than just having followers on social media. The way they interact with her, the way they interact about her, the way they defend her, same way that, that Beyonce is found. Okay, visionary. Like, Why is she a visionary? Oh, listen, I don't think she is. I'm Thank just you. saying... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, JJ. I think everything that she's doing has been done in some form by women previously already. She's not, she's not reinvented the wheel. It's like if people say, um, I don't know, uh, Eddie Murphy's a great comic. It's like, cool, but Richard Pryor did it first. Do you see yeah. what I mean? Good point. Meghan Markle, she's, what she's doing is great. She's in, empowering some women who look mm -hmm. up to her, but it's certainly not new. But don't you think that the point is that nobody is going to describe her if they've got her on the paddle and everything, yeah. they're not going to say, and we've got a whingy wife coming <laughs> on. It's brilliant, come and well, watch that. Well, at least that, that would be accurate. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not, are they? I mean, you know, we've all probably been described as something where you look at it and go, oh, stretching the truth a bit. You know? <laughs> I know yeah, I have. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, in I my think, case, I, any good at all I about anything. That's, I think that's fair. And some of what she's talking about in this um, panel that she's that she's on is some of the work that she's done around children and social media, which they they Archwell has done a lot around that. What, they, what, they what, 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 what have they achieved children. in that? Area? Well, we covered it. What have they achieved? We apart covered from, it. Apart from blowing their own trumpet about how great they are, <laughs> signaling their own virtue. What exactly have they achieved <laughs> to help children? Kevin, Stop. anything? Okay, here we go. <laughs> so they brought, they did this uh, big roundtable discussion recently and took all these parents of children who had died as a result of being bullied on social media to Capitol Hill where these parents yeah. met politicians and senators and, and representatives. So okay, that, is a, that is the thing that, that they did do and Archwell was behind that. And obviously people would say she's done her podcast. Now, 
<laughs> some of us listened to it and it wasn't to everybody. It wasn't to everybody's cup of tea. It did Including okay. Spotify. It, it did okay. They they spent far too much on it is what happened. You know, they they, they got excited <laughs> by signing up Royals um, and spent spent a lot on it. But you know, there are things you can point to, but as Penny said, she's not everyone's cup of tea and she is quite a whinger. They've also um, <laughs> been pushing the social media companies to take more action themselves, more responsibility in protecting kids, which when we talk about Brianna Jai's mother doing the same thing, Esther, we praise her. Meghan and Harry are doing the same yeah, thing. I'll, I'll accept that. Fine. <laughs> oh. Um, so Grudgingly. Now, we... <laughs> yeah. Grudgingly. There's, there's another book we can all get excited about. I'm predicting that this will... When's your birthday, Kev? Uh, December the 1st, World AIDS oh, Day. Oh, it's, it's a bit... It's a bit far away. <laughs> oh, it's thanks. <laughs> okay. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I was going to suggest I could buy this for your birthday, but it's too far away. But it'll be discounted by then. This is James Middleton, the brother of Kate, nice. uh, has brought out his own memoir. So we've got another brother's memoir. Uh, there he is. So um, he has brought out a memoir called Meet Ella, The Dog Who Saved My Life. I think it's that was coming. a chicken. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming in, se in September. This is about uh, his cope with clinical depression and how the dog... Ella, a Cocker Spaniel, uh, saved his life. So it's going to be all about his mental health. Well, problems. I was going to say, uh, is that a real chicken? It's it's there's, there's Ella because you shouldn't be doing that. But uh, <laughs> given that he's uh, evoked uh, the wonder of Cocker Spaniels, which I have we'll one, let him I'm all for, James. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like a great book. Yeah, we yeah, like it. I'll do that with a chicken, though. It's a good cause, but I don't think it's going to sell very well. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, Who's interested in James Middleton? Apart from James Middleton. Yes, but uh, if it's full of stories about his sister, then it, it will sound. Yeah. It won't Obviously be. It won't be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. I love his dog, though. His dog looks fantastic. And, it and also, it... also, it's true. You know, dogs really it's can true. pull you out of a depression. Also, it'll be interesting. It'll be it'll be readable, perhaps, if he hasn't. If he gets a really good, maybe he could get Harry's. Um, Ghostwriter. Ghostwriter. Harry's ghostwriter did cost a million dollars. Mm. I mean, I'm wow. sure that's probably what Isabel gets. Pretty to, much, yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, the Prince of Wales has visited the Oval Cricket Ground to celebrate an Earth Shot Prize winner's new contract supplying sustainable packaging for use in the sporting venues. So it was William who founded the Earth Shot Environmental Prize, recognising and scaling up projects to to repair the planet, it says here. Uh, and he was served up a hot dog in one of these boxes to see the product for himself, but we haven't got a... We, are we waiting for a picture of him in a hot dog? No oh, hot dog. No hot dog. But the, uh, but the thing is, there is something odd about hot dogs in, in somehow. I don't know why. <laughs> Lots just sort of, of odd things about it just, <laughs> they're, they're like it just meat doesn't feel... Yeah, yeah it just... It feel, you know when you talk about Earthshot and we know that meat is, you know, growing of meat, etc., etc., is not helpful to the planet, and you go, I was the, expecting it to be a vegan burger. Anyway, yeah. I'm sure it's not a kind of plant-based hot dog. Let me just check. God, God, I hope well, not. Oh, no, it's a real dog. No, it's a no. No, it's a spaniel dog. Before we go even further down this rabbit hole, I'm going to move us on to tell you that coming up, Britain's biggest pet store, sticking with animals, finds itself at the centre of a bizarre row about staff without children. We're told they were privileged during a diversity talk. Barking man, we're debating that next <laughs> on the talk. <laughs> Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. All Rosie. right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Hey, Quite hey. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. 
and I might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on what just <laughs> happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth blimp. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know what's I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans. Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did to, fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. That. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. This is Talk TV. Welcome back to the talk. A London primary school headmistress has won an unfair dismissal case after she was sacked for assault for tapping her own toddler son's hand while disciplining him. Uh, Shelley Ann, um, blimey, what is this name? <laughs> Shelley Ann Malabava Goldburn uh, was trying to get her three year old to stop playing with a hand sanitizer when she used two fingers to attract his attention. But the moment was witnessed by the teacher in charge of child safety, who accused her of hurting her son before reporting a safeguarding incident. Although police ruled the mother's actions were reasonable, she was found guilty uh, of uh, misconduct and sacked. An employment tribunal has now ruled that dismissal was unfair, leaving her in line for compensation. I think this is at the epicenter of the uh, kind of neurotic madness that has descended yeah. upon us. Uh, you know, this is a mother. Her little uh, kid was just mucking around with a hand sanitizer and it wouldn't stop. And so the mum went, come on, stop that, like that. And somebody reported her for hurting her kid. This is nonsense, it absolute is nonsense. It, it, it's got to stop. This has got to stop. That poor woman has been through hell, uh, finally to be found, uh, you know, innocent. Uh, presumably has still lost her job. This is just crazy. When is this country going to retain, the, uh, regain the sanity the, that it used to be famous for? It's common sense. I think the point is common as well sense. with exactly common right. sense. The point is with this one as well is that the local authority and the police said no more action should be taken. They both said no more action should be taken. It was a tap on the hand because two weeks previously, this child, I think it was three, had squirted hand sanitizer and in in its eye and and and, and it hurt itself. So this was a case of stop doing that, um, and then the trust decided to carry on with this. So that's where the <clears throat> that's where the, 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 the where the next examination should it take. Ever part? involve the police tapping it, a child's hand for goodness sake to stop? Tell them me how many something. parents have not done that and quite significantly more than that. You know, I yeah. certainly did more than that to my children. I think the vast majority of parents have done. You, you eventually get to the end of the line with a child that may be about to run into the road or something, and you give them a, a, a minor swipe. You know, yeah. most of us in this room yeah. were probably smacked quite hard as children. Kevin certainly, wasn't smacked hard enough. Certainly didn't, didn't, <laughs> didn't Actually, do I was. me any harm. <laughs> no, I think this is such an intrusion into parental judgment about 
you know, minor, minor, tiny bits of discipline, which are very occasionally necessary. I think most parents feel awful after they've smacked their children. They really wish they yes, had done yes. it. And that's not that's right. causing any damage. I'm only talking about a little tap before anyone calls the police on me. <laughs> but authorities should not need to get involved in this. This is crazy. It's... I just wonder if there was something going on, you know, that... And, and by the way, I completely agree with everything you've, you've all said, but... Was there more to this? You know, were they looking to get her out? Was there something personal? Oh, you know, was, was there some personal so. animosity I imagine going so. on? Yeah, uh, yeah, between, and, and, and then there is a little bit of me that thinks, OK, she, she knows what the, her colleagues are going to think. You know, should she have been a bit more careful doing it in front of her colleagues if there was something going on? But then I think, no, because you can't help the fact that your child has just done something really stupid and might be but about, to about to drink... about alcohol in yeah, their Yeah, but eye. exactly, might, might yeah. be about to drink this stuff. Um, and then you think, oh, God, you know, maybe just don't bring your kids to the school. But as you the said, kids Kevin... kids go to the school, though. Yeah, they yeah. the would, yeah. Kids go to that school. Um, <clears throat> I think, uh, essentially... The police had to investigate it if it's been reported because yeah, no, say, yeah, yeah they, they did the right thing in investigating it. But once the police, as you said, Penny, have said the yeah. child and was, the local authority as yeah, well, yeah, the child was, was chastised saying. appropriately, then that should have been it. And it should, yeah, should have but been maybe Daisy's right. Maybe there was some kind of agenda here. But if it's true that all this mother, and let me get her name right, what a hell of a name this is, Shally Ann. Uh, Malab the Goulburn. I'm uh, so glad it was you, not me. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> suddenly I get that. Anyway, if that's all she did, and somebody genuinely said, right, I'm reporting this person to the police, then that person who reported th uh, that yeah. poor headmistress to the police needs to be looked at. This, this is the insanity that is infecting this country right now. It's got to stop. Well, wait till they find out that I send my son down the mine every weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By the way, this is probably the moment when I should say, being hit by your parents never did me any harm. <laughs> I mean, I got hit by my parents about three times a week. I've already <laughs> said it, Kev. Yeah. Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> right, from pupils to pets. Workers at one of Britain's biggest pet stores have been told that having no children is an example of privilege as part of their diversity talk. During a Pets at Home staff webinar, one woman, who identified as an ally, said, my privilege is that I am a white, straight, non-disabled, childless, married, <laughs> economically stable, still going, <laughs> living in a developed country. Oh, wow. The clip was later leaked and posted online, provoking a major backlash. One commentator said the suggestion that having children is a handicap was outrageous and offensive. The pet supplier is just the latest retailer to become caught up in a diversity row. It was revealed earlier this week that customers at North Face were offered 20% discount vouchers if they took a racial inclusion course. <laughs> Meanwhile, John Lewis faced a backlash after an internal LGBT magazine promoted chest binders for transgender children. This whole thing boggles my mind. First of all, oh. why do they need to have... Uh, you work at Pets at Home. Your job is to look after pets. <laughs> why do you have all this training via a webinar? Uh, that's the first thing I found very confusing. <laughs> Secondly, I have a kid. I don't. I, it's a privilege sometimes. A lot of the time, I don't think it's a privilege. <laughs> <laughs> it's an annoyance. But if you don't have children, then is it a privilege or not a privilege? I don't... It's just no, irrelevant. It's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, just life. Just it's stick with the hamsters. <laughs> yeah. Where are the goldfish food? <laughs> <laughs> when we talk about pets at home, this is the uh, business, the pet store. It's a chain of pet stores that last week uh, issued instructions or advice to its staff about how to deal with dogs who identify as cats. Oh, my gosh. Or cats are you serious? who identify... <laughs> no. Pets at home needs to be looked at. There's something wrong with this company. Oh, my gosh. It's true. That's it's true. Look it up. I do want what to look do it you up because I cannot believe it. What about a dog that. that identifies as a cat? Ignore it. Uh, dog. If you think your dog is identified <laughs> as a cat, what you do is check yourself into the nearest lunatic <laughs> dog that identifies as a cat, one that won't go and fetch the stick, just looks at it like it's cats do. Because you know what cats are like? They always say that they say dogs, dogs are your are your servants, aren't they? And cats, you are their servants. Because yeah. that's the thing. If you throw a stick for a dog, the dog goes, oh, they want me to go and fetch it. And they'll fetch it endlessly. Cat looks at it and goes, and? A dog's, a lot of, I've never had a dog yet that will fetch a stick. I've had dogs all my life. You throw a stick and they go, what do you want me to do about it? You know. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's something to do with you. It probably you, is. If you, throw the stick, if you throw the stick up a tree, then you need the cat. <laughs> I then you need the dog. Go back to the whole the cat. childless Sorry. thing. Right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> please Who's do. dog? <laughs> oh, but it's just dog. Brings yeah, actually, like... we're not discussing the issue, are we? <laughs> Ridiculous, by uh, the way. I yeah. don't really... You know, the, the fact that this person stood up and said, you know, 
for me, it's a privilege to have no kids. Daisy. I don't really care either way. No, no. I'm so Honestly. bored of hearing about I privilege. Just, I mean, look, we just don't need any of this. But stuff. Why don't they concentrate on making more sales? That's what they're there yeah. to do. It's a business. It's not some kind of re-education facility, yeah. is it? Although, if I was going to get 20% off something, I might actually take any kind of course that they wanted me to go on, frankly. Hard times, Penny. Yeah, <laughs> we are. yeah some of those things are really expensive, though, you know, 20% off. So could you still buy pets in pet shops? Not really. No, no, no. I, mean, I don't think it's about thing. buying yeah, a pet. Yeah, you can buy hamsters and stuff like hamsters. that. Hamsters. Okay. But also, you can buy pet food. And, uh, so and you can't buy dogs, but you can buy hamsters. Yeah. So yeah. hamsters are regarded as kittens. a sort of lesser being than they the dog. Yeah. That's wrong. Yeah, well, they don't fetch sticks. What happens if the hamsters identify but, as dogs? But, the, but even, <laughs> going, even going back to John Lewis with the 20%. LGBT magazine promoting chest binding. That was awful. Oh, yeah, God, that was uh, awful. Like, no, that was that terrible. Oh, that was awful. That was just a fraction of what they were doing. I read the whole thing. Oh, it really? was absolutely outrageous. Yeah. Mm. Unbelievable. <clears throat> it seems like the human race, or certainly the Western human race, is going insane. They're yeah. going insane. It certainly feels like it on this show sometimes. It certainly <laughs> does. Coming up, when you're the on House it. of Commons loses <laughs> yet another former Prime Minister as Theresa May announces she's standing down at the next general election to focus on her other passions. Probably running through wheat fields, oh, dancing gosh. like a robot. That's next on the talk. Oh. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and you're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eave it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat, oh. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from King City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Hey, Quite hey. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, yeah. minutes, four... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what did fail her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to was have another moved on from era. That. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth.
Welcome back to The Talk. Theresa May has announced that she will join the Tory exodus and stand down as an MP at the next general election. The former Prime Minister said she'd taken the difficult decision mm. to step down from her position after 27 years representing Maidenhead. When she came to power in 2016 as the Brexit Prime Minister, she had everything going for her, but when she called a surprise snap election in 2017 in a bid to strengthen her hand, it all went a bit downhill. The Conservatives almost lost their majority in the Commons and just five months later we witnessed a tearful resignation speech in Downing Street. Let's take a look at the Maybot in action. I have to confess when me and my friends sort of used to run through the fields of wheat, um, the farmers weren't too pleased about that. Opponents flirt with a foreign policy of neutrality and prepare for a run on the ground. Brexit means Brexit, and we are going to make a success of it. Yeah. To have had the opportunity to serve the country I love. Yes, yeah, so watching all those clips, though, wasn't it funny how many how, how, how many times we kind of went, oh, you know, the dancing, the kind of the general... It's kind of sweet I in a way. I don't feel that she... I, I know, Kev, you differ on this, but I, I really feel she's a fundamentally decent person. Mm. She no, tried to give that. She tried to give good public service and she had a pretty awful time you know that she everything went wrong basically during her administration and we can argue about whether that's her fault or whose fault it was I, I will i will never forget being in the conference hall at the conservative party conference when she had that awful cough oh, when all the and then the bits of the it. sign were falling off. off behind oh her God, it yeah. was one of the most excruciating things i have ever witnessed politically and you could not not feel sorry for her under those circumstances. And also, the thing that, that, that on, on her side was the fact that she very much was about public service. Now, I definitely she, agree. So, so at least she was, you know, from that point of view, you know, her heart was in the right place. Totally. She'd wanted to be an MP since she was 12. Yeah. She was diligent. She was, she was intelligent. She had a strong commitment to public service. Everybody says she was good on detail. The problem is that that isn't what you necessarily want no, from your prime minister. No, she's very unflashy, wasn't she? A holiday, walking holiday yeah, with that's her husband. Right. Yeah. No, no, there was nothing flouncy or and no whiff of anything about feathering her own nest, nothing like that. But uh, I, I don't disagree with what you said. I think that she was a really decent woman who did her best. I get really a bit fed up with people going, devoted her life to public service. Why can't the rest of us? <laughs> I don't think I said why it like that. Why can't, no, <laughs> not you. But why can't the rest of us, when we do, when we finish our careers, you know, as me in useless journalism, say, I devoted myself to public service. Only politicians are allowed to do that. That said, she was a decent woman trying to do her best. Trouble is, she was useless. She made a speech. <laughs> she made a speech in 2002 that ruined the Tory party. Said, so, we mustn't be the to the nasty party uh, anymore. Ever since then, the Tory that party... That has been a big the, problem. The yeah. Tory party have been trying to be Labour light. That's yeah. what's destroyed them. And uh, her, her, she was the ultimate Brexit bungler. What I didn't like about her was she didn't like what the people of Britain voted for, and she did her level best to thwart that through the political system. And for that, well, I'm not going to convict. And I think I, I think she's our worst ever prime minister, what, worst including this? Liz Truss. I can't, I can't, no. I can't say that's true. When she was um, uh, in charge of the Home Office, she was accused of stoking xenophobia with her. What was it? Making. Uh, it, it uh, it was hostile, hostile, hostile environment. environment. Oh, yeah. hostile, hostile environment. environment. And she did Windrush. And she did Windrush mm -hmm. scandal, which ruined people's lives. And yeah. then with the Grenfell, when, when that Grenfell disaster mm, happened, yeah. and she went down and Corbyn was there. Corbyn was human and hugging people. And she was, and she was so human. awkward, so awkward. She only showed real, true emotion when she resigned. But I think, generally speaking, all those 
black marks against mm. her aside, the fact that she told the Maidenhead advertiser rather than going to a, yeah. a national newspaper shows how the dedicated she was to local... But she had a trouble, uh, as so many people in Westminster, in the Westminster bubble do, uh, you know, uh, they're not really members of the human race. They don't understand ordinary, you know, regular people. Yeah. And she really was the Maybot. She just well, she didn't was, And also, she, she, she couldn't be a leader. You know, you can't mm. go around saying, you know, Brexit means Brexit, and then pushing for a, and then pushing for a hard yeah. Brexit, but realising, not realising, that you have to have some sort of if you're going to get it through, and then to, to have a 20 point lead and you know yeah, squander it and, and completely squander it when you're up against Jeremy Corbyn, I mean, what she, sort of idiot I is that? Nearly bad? Beat her, I would have yeah. loved to have had her Boris in charge of Brexit and her in charge during COVID. Mm. That would have been a, oh, a much yeah. better way around. By the way, Daisy, I don't think she pushed for a hard I was Brexit. Say, what the she hell? rather pushed <laughs> for the opposite. Yeah, she, she just never wanted to thwart what the Brexit. people voted for. And for that, I'm never going to forgive her. You're never going to forgive her. I'm right. sure she'll be devastated. Yeah, yeah. so we're sorry. Well, she um, can go back but, to the but planning it is, committee it is now. Extraordinary. I mean, you and I agree that she was useless. And it is extraordinary how suddenly, the minute that somebody <laughs> becomes an ex-prime minister, suddenly people are all a bit affectionate. Yeah, towards. you're yeah, right like, about like that. Like John Major, you know, suddenly you become an elder mm. stateswoman. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and yeah, everyone yeah. goes, oh, you know, she was a jolly good sort. Yeah. Like, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> hopeless. I'm railing against that, Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my best. Well done, Kev. Now, it is time for Small Talk. <laughs> Isabel, you've got, I've got the first, first one. So, problems at Google HQ. When they opened their latest campus in Silicon Valley, they were busy boasting about how it was all super high tech, space age design, amazing features, a roof made entirely of solar panels. I suppose that's not that novel these days. Mm. Uh, but anyway, they forgot about a fundamental the <laughs> Wi Fi doesn't <Yeah>. work <laughs> in the building. <laughs> Staff apparently can't connect. Um, apparently, the issues are being blamed on the building's billowing roof, mm. which is made up of dragon scale design of 90,000 silver solar panels and may be responsible for trapping wireless signals. That's I mean, the same inside the BBC HQ uh, when they built their amazing new flashy building. Yeah. Um, up just off Oxford Circus. You couldn't get a signal in there either. No phone signal, nothing oh. at the beginning. They should just uh, Google what to do. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> What's wrong with the Wi-Fi in this bill? I don't know. <laughs> Google it. Uh, Penny, what have you got? <laughs> I've got the fact that Adam Sanders become Hollywood's highest paid actor. And that is because of his deal with Netflix. I really liked those shows that he did with Jennifer Aniston, Murder... Murder what Mystery. A, Murder Mystery, Murder Mystery 2. They were really good. Um, and I'm not a wedding massive... Wedding Singer, funny. Oh, the Wedding funny. Singer was very good. And what's the other? Caddyshack, the golfing yeah. film, that's funny. Oh, Caddyshack. No, no, yeah. Caddyshack is not Adam Sandler. Oh, that, that's the other one. Um, you mean Happy Gilmore. You're right. But isn't it extraordinary okay. that, <laughs> oh, that, he, that he's got all this money from Netflix, Bill not, not from yes. Warner Brothers or, yeah. you know, Hollywood... It is the first time... Studio. It, it is exactly that, because normally uh, the, this Forbes list, as they call it, is, is traditionally dominated like Kevin Cosner, Harrison Ford, Tom Cruise, George Clooney... Is it actually only bloats? Yes, of course it is. Um, and uh, he signed to report a $250 million renewal deal with Netflix in 2020 amid claims that subscribers had spent two billion hours watching his film since 2015. There's no such thing as too much Sandler, the company said at the time. Wow. I, I, do, I think Margot Robbie's on that list. Oh, for Barbie. Was, but was, not was top. on the list. Of... But not top. Not... I don't think the women are no, ever top, are she's, they? No, uh, she's in the top. I oh, know, top ten. Four hundred. Four. <laughs> <laughs> International She's Women's hanging. Day, well done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, uh, no matter who wins... I know something about this, by the way. No yeah. matter who wins or loses on Hollywood's biggest night, Oscar nominees will not be going home empty-handed. Everyone wins gift bags are stuffed with $180,000 worth of the most buzzed-about swag designed to pamper <laughs> delight, surprise and inspire. They include an all-inclusive in luxury Swiss getaway, the full line of Miage, uh, ultra-luxury transformative skincare products, whatever <laughs> the hell they are, and a private villa in St Bart's. Now, I used to go to the Oscars. Did you know I used to live in Los Angeles? <laughs> Kept, that Kept that quiet. Kept that quiet. I went to the theatre. Uh, no, but I used to go to the Oscars <laughs> and even the journalists would get amazing swag bags. There you go. You could be watches in there and really, so, really expensive so stuff. How many people get the full works of Nominees. the bags? Well, well if, you're, if you're on the list of invitees as journalists are, 
uh, then it's a sort of upward scale. Right. And so the actors, the famous people who go in the audience, they get swag bags as well. But right at the top of the nominees, uh, and the nominees swag bags are astonishing. I mean, you're literally, altogether, you're talking about millions of dollars worth of really expensive giveaways. I give you the Oscars. That's what it's I love about. the idea of it being like Mary Poppins pulling out your Ferrari. <laughs> do you think house, the, house in... after, after everyone's had a few drinks, do a few get, kind of get left on the floor? Well, I, I, I can imagine think the they journalists do. scurrying yeah. around. I mean, I've got sort of, you know, I used to go in with sort of sweatshirts and, you know, what, what, I've got a watch one. Else. Good stuff. Uh, I've still got some of it. Still fits. No shows, you know, go and get them. Well, listen, Sharon Osbourne, our old mucker, whatever she's getting paid for Big Brother, pay her more. 100,000 a day, I believe. Apparently. But she she, she should get more than that, mate, because she's giving viewers exactly what they want. Unbridled trash talk about celebrities. Yeah. Um, Anna Wintour and Ellen DeGeneres, both in the firing line. And she had a few things to say about James Corden. Have a watch of this. (laughs) Yeah. I think that she plays the old love, oh, I'm so English. I love you, by the way. That's brilliant. And it's like, cut the <laughs> You don't talk like that Just anymore. Sing. Just sing. Just be true to who you are. But she does all this old English, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's pretty watching her because we've all been out with Sharon. Yeah. That's exactly Great. how she yeah. lived her life. Sharon. Yeah, Love unfiltered, Sharon. straight down the point. Poor Adele putting on a fake accent. That's <laughs> what I want to know about Sharon, right? So she's on the talk, uh, hasn't been on for too long in my view. Love it when she's on here. So she's now getting a hundred thousand pounds yes. a day to be on Celebrity Big Brother. So my question to her is, why did you take here. the pay cut? <laughs> Very good. But I love. She also said that Anna Wintour, you know, the former uh, editor of uh, Vogue magazine, was an absolute four-letter word. She said, <laughs> yeah. Uh, she said that James Corden's a ghastly person who does nothing but name drop, and that was how he made it big uh, in the states. I mean, she really she's went great. for it. It yeah. was she's fantastic. Great. She's fantastic. She's great. Yeah. Wonderful. Right. I have got uh, the next one. I am not a good dancer. I know this will come as a big surprise. Like Theresa May, to, right? To yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I make Theresa May look good. <laughs> um, but scientists have discovered dancing brain cells. So John Travolta's thrusting hips may have attracted attention uh, in Saturday Night Fever, but it was another part of his body that got him grooving. Now, French scientists have discovered... <laughs> if, <laughs> if, humans, if humans hit the dance floor at the sound of staying alive, it's because of the effect of syncopation on their Syncopate. left. Is it sensorimotor? Sensorimotor? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. <laughs> I've taken the Kevin pill. Uh, So the researchers say that this part of the brain links auditory and motor systems and therefore gets feet tapping to the beat. So it's all in the beat. Really? You're going to give us a demo? Yeah, come on, show us. Show us, Daisy. (laughs) Well, I would, but sorry, that's all we've Ah. got time for. (laughs) Very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. Now, you might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. 
What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! <laughs> it's carry on what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, missing. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen.